Hello everyone, it's Jay here, and cool, so we're going to be learning how to mix acoustic guitar today. And uh, we're going to be using stock plugins because, hey, they're free. <laughs> so uh, basically I'll just be showing you step by step how um, I would approach mixing an acoustic guitar. And that's really it, we're going to get straight on into this. So we have a track right here, and I'm just going to listen, make sure I'm happy with it, you know, make sure there's no excessive noise, make sure we're not, you know, clipping or any funny business and just generally make sure that this is something that we can work with. So let's give a listen and uh, here we go. Cool, so this sounds good to me. It's nice and balanced. Uh, we have a very clean signal. And as you can see, we have quite a bit of headroom here. So that's great. This is definitely something that we can work with. If it doesn't sound great to begin with, you're going to have a lot of trouble and you're going to be making more work for yourself. But anyway, we're just going to start out. Usually I'll just go right over here to the EQ and you just double click and bring up your channel EQ. Uh, first step I'll usually do, I'll turn up the analyzer so we get this. And we can get kind of a visual representation of what we're hearing. And I'm going to set this to pre-mode. Basically, the difference is that in post-mode, um, any changes that you make in the EQ will be reflected. So say I were to boost something like this. It's going to show it in the analyzer. Uh, but I want to keep it on pre because I want to, uh, I want to see what it is regardless of what I'm doing to it. Okay, so the first filter I usually apply is a high pass filter. And actually just in general, my method for EQ is uh, subtractive EQ, getting rid of any frequencies we don't need, uh, followed by additive EQ. So get rid of the frequencies that aren't helping uh, because I find that kind of brings out the good frequencies anyway, and then see if we want to boost anything. So, okay, I'm going to start with this high pass and just sweep around a bit until I find I'm getting rid of any low frequencies that really aren't helping. Here we go. Just gonna skip ahead somewhere else in the song. Okay, so you'll probably notice this isn't really making much of an auditory difference, and that's good. We've successfully removed all these frequencies and freed up more headroom for later on in the mix if we want to make it louder, and uh, we don't hear the difference. So that's great. We've gotten rid of some useless frequencies. And really, you're not meant to hear those anyway. Those frequencies, um, they can be a problem maybe through a subwoofer. Um, or also through your compressor, because your compressor later on will react to those frequencies, and that's not good because they're, they're not helpful frequencies. Now I'm going to go back to the beginning, because I could hear some ringing frequencies, and I'm going to do my best to find those. So let's just press play. Oh, and just make sure, if you're watching this video, that you're following along on studio monitors or a good pair of headphones, or whatever the best set of speakers you have is, because you're gonna have a lot of trouble hearing this through you know, laptop speakers or cell phone speakers or something like that. So here we go. Yeah, there's definitely something in maybe the one to two K region. Um, and you might be like, Jay, I have no idea what the heck you're talking about, but that's okay. If you've never done anything like this, you can just take one of your EQ bands over here, and uh, narrow the cue up, and then just bring this all the way up and sweep around and just listen for any frequencies that are resonating unusually or in general just not sounding very good. Yeah, that's it. It's right there at 1540. Now, if you still don't hear it, I'm going to cut it out, and then I'm going to put it back in and see if you can hear the difference. It is very subtle. This is something that, you know, takes a lot of practice, uh, just listening to so many audio tracks and, and listening really closely and thinking, yeah, there, there's something that's resonating a little bit weird. Um, but if you're totally new to this and you have no idea how to do that, just try sweeping around and see if there's anything you don't like. You can experiment, cut it out, put it back in and see if it's helping your audio. 
So let's bypass this and see if it's making a difference. I'm actually hearing another one. Usually if there's a ringing frequency like this, it could just be something in the guitar. It could be old strings, just the way they're resonating or a sympathetic vibration. There's usually another one that's very close to it. And I'm definitely hearing that. So let's see if we can get that one too. I think it might be around here. Yeah, so now you can really hear it. If I bypass the whole plugin, uh, you'll notice that these two cuts right here are taking, they're, it's kind of like a whistling, really. So here, let's just see if you can hear that. Really just cleans it up. And honestly, I'm really not hearing anything else at this point. Uh, it's kind of my goal to do as little EQ as possible, just to retain you know, the original quality of the signal. If you don't have to EQ more, then don't. So just listen one more time. I don't think there's anything else I need to change here. Yeah, maybe I want to boost actually a little bit in this uh, kind of low mids because I think I can get a little bit more meat out of this guitar. Yeah, I think that's helping. So you see, it's easier to judge if you want to boost something after you've gotten rid of all these frequencies, because really you've freed up all this room and now it's just about enhancing. You've, you've taken out the things that aren't working and now you're helping it out. So cool. I'm going to move on to the next step now. Um, now, I actually quite like Logic's built-in compressor. It's really great. I'll often see myself reaching for the Studio FET over my uh, 1176 from Waves quite often. It just sounds really great. Um, for guitar, my favorite is probably the Classic VCA. It's a very easy compressor to use. Um, it has an automatic attack and release setting. And I find it's really punchy too, and it just sounds great on you know, acoustic guitar. So for this one in particular, it's, it's a very chuggy part, it's a very rhythmic part, and I think this is gonna sound really nice on it. So let's see what we're gonna do to this. First, I'm gonna take off the auto gain. I like to apply that on my own. And I think I'm gonna take the ratio up. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna make the settings and then I'm gonna explain what I did afterwards. Okay, so I brought this ratio up to three, which is like a medium to heavier compression. And I brought my threshold down, so I'm getting around minus five. Maybe minus five, minus eight. So it's a pretty heavy compression. I like to go a little heavy on the compression. Um, but you'll notice it's making it a lot quieter, because that is what a compressor does. After all, it makes your signal quieter. But the magic is when you use your makeup gain to bring it back to the original signal. And you get something that's a lot more dynamically similar throughout the entire song, which can make it sound louder. It's a perceived loudness. So I'm gonna bypass the plugin and turn it back on and basically make sure that I'm adding the right amount of makeup gain to the plugin. All right, here we go. Cool. So now you can tell when I'm turning off and on the plugin, it's not getting louder, but it is changing the sound. And this is really important to do because if you're just making your track louder, you know, your ears are going to prefer the louder sound no matter what the settings are. You want to hear what the compressor is doing. So let's listen really carefully to um, just a little bit of the intro and I'll kick the compressor on and see if you can hear what it's doing. So this is with it bypassed. and then engaged. So you can hear how it's really beefing up the sound. It's not making it 
louder per se, but because it's evening out the dynamics, it's increasing the perceived loudness. And at this point, I'm pretty much done. If this were just a, in a mix, I would leave it as it is. Maybe I'd pan it a bit to the left or to the right. But I'm going to show you a little trick. If you're working with maybe a singer-songwriter and it's just vocals and guitar and you want to get a bit of a stereo sound, um, I'll actually pan this about 20 to the left and it'll sound like this. And then I'll create a send to bus one. I already have this set up, by the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start feeding signal into the silver verb plugin. This is the uh, settings I have. I'm actually going to turn this, uh, this dry off. But we're just going to start sending some of the signal and see how it starts to sound stereo. <laughs> can do this with electric guitar as well. If you listen to any Van Halen stuff, uh, you'll actually hear how he uh, will sometimes pan the delay all the way on the right channel and keep the dry guitar on the left. It's really, really cool stuff. Just listen to some of his, uh, his records and you'll hear exactly that. The dry guitar on the left effects on the right. So basically all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select all the effects and changes that we've made in this episode. Um, I'm actually going to start with just the channel EQ and compressor and then I'm gonna turn everything on. So let's just see what the channel EQ and compressor is doing alone. Starting with off. really just bringing it forward. You can hear it's getting rid of the weird whistling frequencies. And even though we made that low cut, there's still plenty of low end, but we've left ourselves a lot of headroom. Now I'm just going to turn on this reverb as well. So I can take all the effects and turn them off and back on. Here we go. All right, so that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, please leave a like. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And make sure to subscribe because I have plenty of new videos coming your way. So thank you all so much for watching as always and take care everyone.